Iran, tens of thousands have taken to the streets in protest following the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini in police custody after she was detained for a problem with her headscarf. The event really struck a nerve across Iran because I think everyone in Iran could see their daughter, their wife, their sister under the same circumstances. In China, massive protests have swelled too, as well as calls for leader Xi Jinping to step aside. They began, of course, in furious reaction against the uh, zero COVID lockdowns that have imprisoned uh, tens of millions, sometimes hundreds of millions of Chinese in their apartments. The protest movement in Russia has been more muted, experts say, though many thousands came out in 2021 after the imprisonment of Alexei Navalny, an opponent of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February also brought out protesters. There were significant protests that emerged uh, briefly um, after the invasion of, of Ukraine and then again later in the, towards the end of the summer when, when uh, Russia announced that it would mobilize uh, a broader draft of people to go fight in Ukraine. Experts say that protesters in Iran, China and Russia have won policy concessions from their authoritarian regimes, such as China's recent loosening of COVID-19 restrictions following mass public outcries. But what do protest movements need to overturn authoritarian regimes? We asked our experts. An elite split at the top could weaken Putin, they say. If they think they have a future after the boss is gone, then maybe they'll decide at some point that they'll seek to ally themselves with potential protesters in the streets. They'll make it clear that um, that they're not going to stand you know, against against them, and maybe that'll encourage you know more people to go out in the streets. Experts see large strikes across Iran as positive, but note that members of the regime's security sector haven't sided with the protesters. And then finally, I think that there needs to be some kind of leader of this revolution, some kind of uniting factor to what would occur after this regime would fall. And also to give, I think, elements of the regime a way out. Our experts say, Protesters will more likely succeed if they can take advantage of an economic crisis in a country, change their tactics, and dig in, potentially for years. And they add that protesters must be nonviolent and better at technology than the regimes that track them. There's many, many more people in a country and internationally willing to support a nonviolent movement compared to a violent one. Even without bringing down regimes, which our experts don't expect, protest movements give hope. I think the reason for hope is precisely in the message that's been delivered that these regimes lack broad or secure and comprehensive public support. And as public support erodes, experts say, so does a regime's legitimacy. Laurel Bowman, VOA News, Washington.